Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I don't think it's uh, uh, too late for me to say at least one more time, Happy New Year. <laughs> and listen, have you ever seen anything? Have you ever seen a year come in with the explosion of 2024. I mean, listen, this is going to be some year and uh, uh, it's going to be a tremendous year for the true believer, but it will be a year. Now, listen to me, my friends. Listen to me. It will be a year of spiritual warfare. It will be a year of cultural wars. It will be a year where you will have to decide whose side you're going to be on because the devil is busy, but he will never outdo God. It seems to me the world and uh, the world's minions know no boundaries. They want to infiltrate the church. They want to change the church. They want to change the way we shout, dance, worship, uh, live. Uh, uh, they want to redefine what music is appropriate to be played in church and what music is not. They want to bring the world in with the twerking and the, uh, the surfing and all this other stuff, uh, bringing all of these uh, wicked things in the church. And at the same time, they want the church to be silent and uh, uh, want people to say nothing. And so there's a divide. I've been, I've been telling you about this for years. There is the divide that we prophesied about some 20 years ago. I said that there would come a divide in the body of Christ. And the divide would be ba on the basis of those who really believe the Bible, really trust the word of God, believe that it is God's love letter to us, believe that it is the only inspired, uh, holy, written word of God and those who do not. The divide would come between those who have discernment and those who do not. You need discernment because we don't need as much discernment. Uh, we don't need very much to determine the difference between, in many cases, right and wrong. And I'm about to take that back because some of you seem not to know that. But the difference between what is right and almost right. Satan is trying to, uh, Peter uh, warned us that evil men would creep in unaware and would bring in damnable heresies, doctrines that are contrary to the established doctrines of the church, teachings that would challenge uh, orthodoxy, what the church believes and what the church has always believed, and hopefully what the church will continue to believe. Teachings that question the perfection of Jesus Christ. Teachings that question whether uh, a man uh, can be with a man and that be accepted. Uh, preachers who now uh, uh, christen uh, babies brought to them by same-sex couples in the church. And the, and the word to the church people is, shh, don't say anything. Be quiet. Keep your mouth shut. Well, the devil is a liar. We're called to cry aloud and spare not. Isaiah 58 and 1. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. I notice this. The world is not tiptoeing. The world is not behaving as though they're walking on eggshells. These false teachers and these false preachers, oh man, they're bold with their falsehoods. They put it online. They go on talk shows. They defend their wicked positions. And, then, and on the other hand, they want us to tuck tail and run. But let me say to all of those who are spirit filled, God, when the Lord fills you with the Holy Ghost, he fills you with the Holy Ghost for more reasons than to speak in tongues. Do you, in Acts, and you know, Gary, this is just right off the top of my head here. 
in Acts chapter number two and uh, uh, verse four uh, on the day of Pentecost. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God uh, gave them utterance. And even in speaking in these other tongues, the, the people who were there, the Jews who were there from all over the world, from all over the diaspora, Jews from Mesopotamia, the Elamites, Medes, Parthenians, Jews from Cappadocia, uh, Pontus, Asia, Ferga, uh, Pamphylia, Egypt, uh, Libya, uh, Lyd Libya, and uh, Serene, and strangers of Rome, proselytes from all over the country. This is uh, Acts chapter 2 and verse uh, 9 and 10 uh, at the end 11. It says, we do hear them speak in our own tongues. In these different diverse languages, the wonderful works of God. They were speaking the wonderful works of God. Now, I want you to listen to me now. Gary, they were speaking the wonderful works of God. And people were amazed because these men were Galileans. They were thick-tongued, uneducated Galileans g gathered uh, 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 in the upper room and uh, uh, on the day of Pentecost. And uh, they thought that they were drunk or something. And Peter got up and defended them and said, these men aren't drunk off, off wine. He said, but this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. But they, they heard him, them speak the wonderful works of God. But look at this. I'm going to turn the page to Acts chapter number four. This is after the man was healed at the beautiful gate. And, and after the word got out and uh, excitement went everywhere, Peter and John were challenged by the authorities. They were called in and told to not, to not speak anymore. Verse 17 of Acts chapter 4. But that it spread no further among the people let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. Don't speak in the name of Jesus anymore. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But look at this. Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God, to hearken unto you more than unto God, you judge. He, they said in verse 20, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So uh, when they had further threatened them, they let them go, right? They let them go. Verse 23 says, and being let go. They went back to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. Do you follow me? Look at this. The people responded positively. The people praised God with them. The people began to quote Psalms number two. And the Bible says this in verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled. Look at this with the Holy Ghost. This is the second feeling. And look at this. But this time it doesn't mention that they spoke in tongues. This time it doesn't mention that they spoke the wonderful works of God. This time it says, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Other words, they preached in Jesus' name. They didn't take it back. They didn't soften. They stood on God's word. And my friends, as never before, we must stand on God's truth. The devil wants to silence the believer. The devil wants to make us take down but my friends, we can't do it. We must say what God says. 
Before I talk about a big thing that's going to happen tomorrow night and invite you to the service tonight, I just want to read a passage of scripture to you. Uh, I guess I just finished reading the scriptures to you. But Proverbs chapter number 23 and uh, verse 23 says this, and this is to you, you, and especially you who are watching. It says, buy the truth and sell it not. Not only buy the truth, but also wisdom and instruction and understanding. I want to say to the believers out there, do everything you can to invest in your library. Do everything you can to get the best Bibles. Do everything you can, oh my, to get caught up and in God's truth and learn. It says, buy the truth, acquire it. Invest in it. You want God's truth. You want God's wisdom. You want God's instructions. Some translations uh, translate the word here, instruction, discipline. And you want God's understanding. Oh my, when you have the understanding of God operating on the inside of you, you're not going to lose your mind. When you have the discipline of the Lord, uh, the instructions, the discipline, now you're able to walk within the lines that the Bible uh, uh, has given us as guidelines and you won't go astray. You won't take an exit that you shouldn't take. Wisdom, oh my, God's wisdom is the proper application of knowledge and understanding, knowing how to apply it. And it says all of this by acquire truth by the truth that is God's truth and sell it not and whatever God says that's what we're going to stand on now listen I got to wrap this up because I've noticed in my promos I've been going uh, quite long uh, and they begin they, they're becoming many sermons and uh, I thank you for watching. And uh, uh, it's just so many things going on. You know, Gary, I think we started out just one, two or three minutes, five minutes. And now all of a sudden we got a sermon going on. So let me try to pull this in. But tomorrow night, tomorrow night, tomorrow night, tomorrow night is just big. It's big. It's big. Uh, this is North Carolina third. Uh, listen, this is the jurisdiction that the Lord has blessed yours truly. Uh, to serve as jurisdictional prelate over. I'm honored. I'm honored. NC Third Auxiliaries in Ministry. AIM Rally 2024. This is going to be our first big AIM Rally uh, for this year. Look at this. Friday Night Live. Tomorrow night, January the 19th, 7.30 p.m. Where? Right here at Jurisdictional Headquarters, the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. We are excited to highlight our youth and our young adults through dance, uh, through praise, through teaching and preaching. Our goal is to raise up young people who both enjoy the Lord and know the Lord. We want you to have fun in Jesus because God knows life is fun. There's fun in serving the Lord. There's joy. A better word is it's joy, there's happiness, there's peace. But also, we want we want to raise up young folk. We want to raise up uh, Hananiah, uh, uh, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. That is better known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We want to raise up young people who can defend the faith, who know what they believe. Praise God in this day and time. Satan is coming after our youth at, uh, at, at earlier and earlier ages. He's he's he has infiltrated everything, including the the cartoons. And we want our young people to know what the word of the Lord uh, says. We want to say to the pastors out there uh, of NC Third and those in the surrounding areas. You can trust your young people when they come to our service, not unless you're trying to teach them that you can bring the world into the church and you, you know, you can have soul train church and American bandstand church and church where you can dance uh, to uh, the world and, and act like the world and praise like the world. And uh, if you're teaching young men to twerk and, and to drop it like it's hot and all that in church uh, or for that matter, anywhere, then you won't like 
our approach. But if you want them to know who Jesus is, know how to defend the faith, know where they stand in Christ Jesus, know what the Bible says. And it, in addition to that, uh, church is presented to them in, in, in a way where they get to enjoy the, the, the joy of Jesus and, and the glory of the Lord. Uh, we're going to have a marvelous time. Our AIM chairman, Pastor Charles J. Washington Jr. will be preaching the word of the Lord. I uh, intend, to, I, I'm going to be in the service and we look forward to seeing the leaders of NC Third to join me. By the way, Pastor Washington, his latest book, he's also an author, it's called Wreck, Damage, and Rebuilt by Pastor Charles Washington. He's the pastor of uh, Regeneration Temple Church of God in Christ, a tremendous man of God, a son of this ministry. And this is his second book, and we're just excited about this man of God who is going to be preaching the word of the Lord. Parents, bring your sons, bring your daughters, We and we invite you to invite a neighbor and, and friends. Pastor, gather your youth and make plans to be here. We're going to have an awesome time. And then immediately after service, uh, meet the AIM leaders. We want you to meet them in the fellowship hall. There'll be refreshments uh, that will be provided. And uh, we're just thankful to God for what the Lord is going to do. You Listen, you see the AIM workers there. Oh my, uh, Elder Everett Johnson, Evangelist Crystal Amanchuku, Evangelist Emil Hope, Sister Shonda Murray, Evangelist Margaret Hamilton, Evangelist Janet Thompson, Elder Clarence Rayford, Elder Jerome King, uh, National Evangelist Tamika Douglas, and 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 you'll find out about all their positions and all that. But these are people who are sold out for Jesus Christ, and they want to do everything they can to strengthen our youth, to strengthen uh, the ministry. We, we, this time, we are focusing on our young people, and I'm hoping that any time we put anything on and we, we announce that we're focusing on the young people, that parents do whatever they can to get the young people out here, and you accompany them, and the Lord will bless you real good. Now, having said all that I have said, and I prob I probably have been talking too fast, I hope that, that, that you got it all, and if you didn't, go back and play it again. You, It's right there. It's the same thing. Uh, and so uh, the Lord's going to bless you. But I want to invite you tonight, my friends. God has given me something to teach, and I can hardly wait. I am chomping at the bit to deliver the word of the Lord, because the word of God is right, and the word of God will keep you. It'll keep you. It'll keep your mind stayed on Jesus. It will keep you calm in these disturbing times. And I'll tell you something else it will do. It'll keep you from being uh, confused. I'm not doubting about the way at all. The way of wholeness is as plain to me today as it was, uh, well, actually more plain than it was when I first got into it. When I first gave my heart to Jesus and joined the church of God in Christ, the temple church of God in Christ, under the leadership of the late great James Henry Turner, I knew when the Lord saved me. I knew when I got saved at that church and heard that preacher preach. I said, uh, I found it. I found what I've been looking for. This fits me like a hand in glove. And here I am 46 years later, still serving the God of the Bible, still excited about Jesus and on fire for the Lord. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. So join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> you know, I still get a kick out of that. Bible study. And listen, thank God for you. I hear from so many of you. And uh, you've let me know that it blesses you also. I received Brother Gary in my exit. In my exit. This is my third closing. As you can tell, I'm a preacher. Um... I, I received a text from a, a man of God and he said this to me, I've been following you. I, I've been following you and praying for you for over 26 years. He said, I heard you preach 26 years ago from Psalms 23. Yes, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He says, Brother Wooden, I've been praying for you and following you ever since. 
said, that message changed my life. That brother blessed me real good this morning. And you don't know how sending me that text inspired me to want to stand on God's word the more. Because there is nothing more powerful than God's truth. There's nothing that can just reach down in you and grip your soul and hold you for a lifetime like the truth of God. Amen. And the truth about God. So I want to say to every preacher, preach God's truth. Declare it with everything you got. And uh, watch the Lord do the rest. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Thank you for being so kind. Thank you for joining me.